make sure all your homework is turned in. Make sure you have your stories out. Okay, guys, I only have three homework assignments, so come turn in your spelling homework, please, and have your stories out. in the trash can for me. Okay, we will play our little game again. All right, so, yeah, same game. Same game. So talking out loud, not paying attention, not having your eyes on Mrs. Rule and I'm talking, leaning back in your chairs, not facing forward. Lots of ways you can get little tally marks next to your name. Okay, so you guys, let's start with the word of prayer, and then we'll get started, okay? Heads bowed, eyes closed. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Lord, help us to have a great class, period. Lord, help each student to do their very best today. Lord, help us to enjoy our lunch here in a little bit, and we're thankful for all of your blessings. In your name I pray, amen. All right, so you guys had an assignment to write a paragraph about a friend, and I will give... 10 tickets to the first person who volunteers to read theirs in front of the class. Emily, come on up. My friend. My friend makes me happy and makes me laugh. Also, my friend is kind and gentle. My friend likes to help his family and help his friends. My friend is my best friend. Awesome. Good job. Can you guys give her a round of applause? That was very good. Now, she used complete sentences. She told me what her friend was like. Um, she's kind and gentle. She like He likes to help his family and her friends. Okay, it was four sentences just like I asked. Now, this was not a difficult assignment. Emmeline did a very good job. So, when you're given assignments, don't be afraid. When you guys go to possibly high school and in college, you might have to take a class called speech, okay? Where you will have to write down your thoughts, and then not only will you have to turn that paper into your teacher, but you're gonna have to be able to deliver it in front of your classmates. Um, it's a fun class to take. 
You have to be able to come out of yourself. How many of you would say, I'm a little bit shy? My personality is a little bit shy and that's not something I enjoy doing. Okay, awesome. Guess what? You might be a teacher. You say, Mrs. Rule, that's crazy. If I'm shy, I'm never going to be a teacher. But that's exactly what I thought when I was in school. I was like, I'm so shy. I never talked to anyone. I didn't want, like the teacher would talk. I would never volunteer to get up in front of anybody. Um, and then um, I went to college and I decided I wanted to be a teacher. And guess what? You have to come out of yourself real quick when you're going to be a teacher. But one of those classes was speech class. And I was still terrified. I was in college with all of my peers and guess what the very well the very first thing we had to do is we had to write down our testimony of how we accepted Christ as our Savior I went to a Christian college um, Gavin eyes up here so we had to write down about how we had trusted Christ as our Savior and then we had to deliver that in front of all of our classmates when we got saved and so I made it through that one that one wasn't a very long one and it was basically just telling the story about how I got saved but then the very next assignment we had, we had the assignment of doing a meme. And now how many of you know what a meme is? Okay. So a meme, if you guys have ever seen memes, they have to act something out without what? Talking. Without talking. So we had an assignment of doing a meme all by ourselves in front of our peers. And mine was the topic, we had to pull a topic out of a bag and whatever we got, that was what we had to do. My topic was ice skating for the first time. So I had to get up there and act out ice skating for the first time in front of all of my college peers. Okay? So I'm up in front of the class and I'm like, you know, doing this. And then I fell and it was like they all laughed. But you know what? It, it was a little bit embarrassing. It was a little intimidating. But it caused me to really come out of myself. And I'm hoping with this creative writing, and we, not going to tell you when, but we may have an assignment to do a meme in here. But what I want you guys to do is I want you to come out of yourself. I want you to be able to write down your thoughts and then feel comfortable coming up and reading them. How many of you have ever done an oral book report before? Okay, just Emmalyn. Ariel, you've done one? Other school? Okay. Um, oral book reports are very, very common to do in school. You take a book, you read it. You learn about it, and then you write out what happened in that book, your book report, and then you stand up in front of your class and you deliver it. Now, you guys know what I'm talking about? Yes. How many of you have had to do that before? Okay. So, I want you to be able with this journal, this is creative writing process that we're learning about. I want you to be able to come out of yourself. I want you to be able to use your creativity and grow and learn and pull out of yourself things that really are there. That there's talents there, and you just have to kind of draw them out. Okay. So that's the goal of this. Now, um, does anyone else want to read their friend paragraph that they wrote yesterday? Three, two, I know you don't have yours. I'll let you read it tomorrow. Anyone else? Okay. Now, I gave you the option today, and Emily earned 10 tickets, but I'm not always going to give you the option. On some of these assignments, I'm just going to pick and choose and say, come on up and read yours. So you're going to have to get brave. When you're delivering it, though, Listen, just be confident. Stand up. Look your peers right in the eye and just deliver it. Okay? Be confident in yourself because, like I said, a lot of you have these creative talents. You just have to draw them out and then you got to be confident. Sometimes you guys have these great talents and you don't want to share them because you're, you're so shy. Okay? So, how many of you at your house, you've actually ever written a journal of your own? Anyone ever written a journal? Okay? Journaling is something that I enjoy. Um, there's been times in my life where I've been better at it. When, I'm, when my life gets very busy, sometimes I forget. But journaling is really neat, and here's why. When you get older, that journal will help you to remember things that happen that maybe you wouldn't always remember. Um, when I became a mom with Hudson 13 years ago, um, I started writing things down. I wrote some of the funniest things down that he said. For example... Um, let me see if Gianni's on here. Okay, good. Gianni, if you can't hear me, make sure you mention it to me. Um, one of the things that he used to say, he used to call a vacuum an Ani. Instead of a vacuum, he would call it an Ani. I have no idea. I think maybe because it got really loud when the vacuum was on. And um, so I would always tell him before, I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to turn it on. 
And so I think then he just started calling them Anis. But then um, another thing is he used to call airplanes up ups. He would see airplanes and he would go, oh, up up, up up. And I would I wrote that down. And then another another funny thing that he said, and this one cracked me up so hard, but I was driving down in my car one day. Have you guys ever been in a car where the brakes start to squeal a little bit because they need new pads? Have you guys ever experienced that with your parents' cars? It's a really awful sound, right? So I'm driving down in my Liberty and um, my brakes are squealing because we need new pads. And I can't stand that sound. And so Hudson was just a little guy. I think he might have been one or two. He was in his car seat in the back. He probably was more like two because he was talking, but barely. And um, so the brakes started to squeal, and I was like, oh, oh, oh. And Hudson goes, Mommy, what wrong? I said, oh, it's okay, honey. It's just the brakes. So then a little while later, I go to stop, and it, it happens again. And I'm like, oh, I can't stand that sound. And Hudson goes, Mommy, what wrong? I said, honey, it's just the brakes. It's okay. So then the next day, we still hadn't had it fixed. And same deal. I would, oh, I just can't stand that sound. And so every time it did it, I would kind of, um, make a sound out loud and mommy mommy what wrong it's okay honey it's just the brakes so then like the next week i'm driving down the car and hudson's in the back seat and he's going oh 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 and i'm like hudson honey what's wrong and he goes my boy's hut <laughs> and i thought that was so funny that whole time that little boy thought when I was talking about the brakes, I was talking about something on my body. He thought my brakes were hurting on my body. And so then he imitated that. And that was so funny and I wrote it down. And the reason why I remember those things is because I wrote them down. I wrote a journal of all these little funny things that he did. Then Colton came along and life got busy because now I had two. And I wrote, I wrote very little down about Colton. And so honestly, I don't remember anything funny he said other than one thing. When he was little, we went to the doctor when he was four. And the doctor was asking him if he knew his letters and his numbers and the days of the week. And he wasn't even in school yet. He had just turned four. And so he, Colton's kind of looking at him and answering when he can. And then finally the doctor said, do you know your days of the week? Do you know what today is? Well, in our house, we have tacos every single Tuesday. So we call it Taco Tuesday. Well, it happened to be Taco Tuesday. And so we were making a big deal of it. We're like, tacos tonight. So as soon as the doctor asked him, do you know your days of the week? And he's kind of looked at him like, not really. And then he goes, do you know what today is? And he goes, Taco Tuesday. So I was so excited because he at least knew what that day was because we were having tacos that night. But journaling is a fun thing for you guys to do. It's something that you can, you can get a little book. You can even find them real cheap at the stores. Uh, I know Five Below even has some journals for real cheap. A few dollars, you can get one. And just write some things that are important to you, maybe some things that happened every day. And then you'll have something fun to look back and remember your sixth grade year, your seventh grade year. Or maybe one day you'll be able to pass those on to your kids and your kids can look back and go, whoa, when my dad was in sixth grade, it was there was a big virus going around and he had to wear a mask to school and these are kinds of things that your children would really enjoy reading so journaling's fun i know there's when my grandma passed away last summer we were able to go in and find a whole stack of writings that my grandpa had written and a lot of them were from world war ii they still had the ribbons tied and it was so neat just to be able to open those up and kind of see into my grandpa's life years and years and years before because he had written it down and today, in our society, we've lost the art of writing, okay? We do a lot on our computers and our phones, right? We text. Um, how many of you have a lot of printed pictures at your house? We don't, okay? You know why? Because a lot of them are still on my phone. And so we've lost that art because we have a lot of digital stuff. But we want to make sure that we're, we're using this art of writing. I think in a sense it's kind of sad because we might have a, a few years go down the road and we don't have a lot of things written about what happened because we've lost that art. And so I hope that maybe as we're learning this might inspire you to start your own journal. Of course I'm going to take your writings, by the way, if you did not bring this today. Um, you need to bring it tomorrow. I'm going to have you turn these in. I'm going to be entering all of the first couple that we do into our journal, our class journal. And then after that we're going to be kind of voting on a couple to put in each time. So we're making a class journal. But I hope maybe this inspires you guys to start your own journal. Something that you can do at home. Um, and we're going to talk about what different journals entail. Like what would we put in a journal, okay? So let's look at page 51. We didn't look at this too much yesterday. 
The top there is just kind of a fun activity. It says mind stretcher, daffy definitions. Some of these are just trying to get you to use your brain a little bit more. Yesterday, our anagrams, we learned making an anagram means taking a word and using the same letters and creating a new word. I did not know. Okay, we're just one. Yeah, no, I wrote it down to do it today, yeah, but no, that's okay. Out. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So today, let's look at the mind stretcher. It says Daffy definitions. A dentist has been defined as a man who runs a filling station. Okay, so you'll see that this word Daffy. Can you guess what Daffy means by looking at this definition? A man who runs a filling station. Ariel, what would your guess be? Kind of like a funny, silly definition, right? A filling station, like I got a filling in my tooth. Yeah, we know a filling station is usually a gas station, right? So let's see if we can think of anything funny for a dog. Can you guys think of a Daffy definition of a dog? Ariel? A noisemaker, noise okay. Anyone else have any fun? There's no wrong answers here. These are just silly definitions. Yes? Roll in the mud. Roll in the mud, okay. Okay, so we're looking at a definition, so we just want to think of, um, so like the dentist is a man who runs a filling station, so a dog is a noise maker. Yes. Say it again. A rough rough. A rough, rough. Okay, good. <laughs> Anyone else? Aaron? A dirt tracker. A dirt tracker? Good. Yes, my dogs are the worst. I have this little white fluffy dog who loves to go out. As soon as the sprinklers come on at 5.30 in the morning, she is whining in her cage because she wants to go outside and she runs out in the sprinklers and she attacks all the little sprinkler heads. And then she comes up to the door and her little white paws and her mouth are all covered with grass stains because she's been jumping from sprinkler head to sprinkler head attacking them. So, and she's always muddy. Okay, electrician. Thingy caps on. A daffy definition of an electrician. Yes. Shocking. Shock. Okay. A shocking man. That's a good one. Because electricity shocks you. Does everyone get that? A light turned on. A what? For an electrician? How can you make that a de definition for a man? Because an electrician is like a person, right? So maybe like. A bright worker or something? Yes. Okay, so that would be a reg that would be a regular definition though. It's not really funny or daffy, right? So I would think of something like an electrician, lights, maybe like a bright worker. Okay, how about astronaut? Oh. Astronaut. Adam? What? Out of, this world. Out of this world. Okay. Good. A person that goes to zoom, zoom to space. Okay. I think of, I would, I put on mine a spacey explorer. <laughs> you think about spacey, they're kind of like, it means like they're kind of forgetful. So that's kind of a goofy definition. How about umpire? You guys know, boys know what an umpire is, right? Guy who the referee for baseball basically yes. Okay. <laughs> Look at this word Daffy though, guys. I want you guys to go beyond. We're kind of hitting the surface. You see how they use that play on words when they said a filling station, and you notice how I use the the play on words when I said a spacey explorer. So can we come up with something creative? That kind of is a play on words a little bit. A little bit of a goofy definition, but it's a play on words. That's what we're looking for here. Emmeline? Um, Pack Empire. What? The Path Empire. The Path Empire? What do you mean by that? Explain. Okay, so basically path going through the middle of it. For an umpire? Yeah. Well, an umpire is someone who um, oversees a baseball game and decides the rules on it. 
Ariel, what are you thinking? Okay. Good. Yes? What? I can't hear it. A meanie. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. I would think of maybe like a Grand Slam rule maker. Okay, once again, using that play on words. We think of umpire, we think of baseball, home run, Grand Slam, strikeout. Okay, so remember using those words. All right, now let's, you got one, Tristan? Out, out, man. <laughs> okay, some good ones, guys. All right, let's look down at the bottom here. It says a journal is a story of your past, a record of your experiences, your impressions, and your dreams. Okay? So once again, when you're writing a journal, you're talking about things that have happened in your past, maybe what's going on in your life right now, and dreams. What do you dream of in the future? I remember when I was in elementary school, my friends and I, we would get together. Sometimes we'd have slumber parties. We would lay out on our trampoline. We would look at the stars, and we would talk about the way our life was going to turn out, what we were going to do, we were going to go to college, who we were going to marry. We had our whole life planned out. And so that's what a journal is. A journal is... It's talking about your past, what's going on right now, and then dreaming about the future. And hopefully, I know we kind of laugh and it's a little bit silly thinking about who we're going to marry, but I hope you guys at least have dreams about if you're going to go to college or not. You guys should have those dreams, and it should be something that you're working for. I think everyone in here has the potential and could go to college and be very successful. Um, obviously, the more education you have, the easier it is to get a what? A job, a good career, okay? So start thinking about that right now, sixth grade. What do I want to do with my life? Where do I want to go? And then what are the steps to get me there? Because remember, if we fail to plan, we plan to fail. Say that with me. If we fail to plan, we plan to fail, okay? If you have no direction in your life, you have no thoughts about what you want to do, and you're really planning to fail, right? Because you're failing to plan. So you should have dreams. And those are some things that you can write down in your journal. And then you can kind of track them. If my dream is to be an attorney, where could I go to college to get a law degree? How much would it cost? What would I need to save up in the years to come to be able to do that, to be able to accomplish those dreams? So you could do that and then you could write out those goals. This is how I'm going to earn that money. This is how I'm going to work and save up and be able to go to law school. So using your journal, um, it says a good writer does not depend on his memory. He writes down his thoughts, even new words and interesting names he hears. Perhaps he will use these things later in his writing or maybe they will just stay in his journal as captured memories and impressions. But what exactly do you put into your journal? Many great and famous writers down through the years have kept journals. They are important tools for any writer. These are some of the things that they have written about. And by the way, the reason why we have a lot of facts about our history is because people wrote in a journal. If they hadn't written down journals, things that had happened, their experiences, there's a lot about history that we might not have. We might have a lot of gaps. So we appreciate the fact that people use this art and they learn to write. The first thing that they use is descriptions. Yes. A Bible is a, it's God's journal, right? He wrote down his experiences. He told those disciples what to write. The Bible is such an amazing, that's a whole other topic. But it's so amazing to study out how the Bible was written. It, and I'll just give you a quick little thing. It took over 50, it was really, it took over 1,500 years to write the Bible from start to finish. And it was written by 40 different authors in over 40 different countries. And yet, it all goes together it doesn't contradict each other it's kind of crazy when you think about it you had people in this country and people in this country over a period of 1400 years who are writing and all of those stories mesh none of them contradict each other it's quite amazing but anyways we're not going to talk about that right now we'll go on our journal descriptions descriptive writings are the most common journal entries a writer's goal is to capture an image so exactly that the reader sees his mind's eye just what the writer sees with his two eyes to do this, a writer must look closely and observe details. He practices this and puts his descriptions of even the most ordinary things in his journal. Look around the room or out the window and create descriptions for your own journal. Okay, so a description. Once again, when you're writing this descriptive paragraph, 
can the reader who's reading it picture it in their mind's eye? Can they picture what you're trying to say? Okay, if not, then you're, you're being very vague. You're not being descriptive enough, okay? We wanna be descriptive, we wanna be creative. Portraits is another thing that we can include into our journal. Portraits, a good writer observes what? People, people or who I should have said. Since every person is unique, it is fun to study people and record what we see. My grandfather was the best at this. He loved to go to the mall and just watch people. He thought it was the best thing in the world. And he was so funny because he would just sit there and he would watch people and, and just analyze them. That was something that he enjoyed doing. Um, and he had made friends that wherever he went, he would strike up conversations. And he would learn a lot about them just by watching them first. And then he'd be able to strike up a conversation and he had a new friend. I mean, there wasn't, when I was little and he watched me, we would go everywhere and everyone knew my grandfather. Everyone knew him because he was good at watching people. He was good at analyzing them. He was good at observing the details. And he could tell right off the bat what kind of a person you were by looking at you, by seeing how you reacted, by seeing how you dressed. He could figure out what your interests and likes were, and he was really good at this. These portraits may become characters for stories or even show up in letters that we write. The writing of portraits will help to teach us about people. Your entry may be just one or two lines about someone you saw or met, even a friend or relative. Something like this. Wednesday, April 28, 2001. You notice they started with the date, so we would know when exactly this happened. It says, little boy with shy eyes and a catchy laugh. About seven years old. Sandy hair with cowlicks in the front. Evidently proud of his new shoes, for he stopped to wipe them two times. Now, who can tell me something they've noticed about this little entry right here? Ariel, they're not complete sentences. Here we have a portrait and it just kind of gives descriptions. They are not, she's not writing this in paragraph form. She's not telling us a story. She just wrote down a portrait of someone. Very brief descriptions of that little person, okay? And then look at the next thing that could be in a journal, words and names. Every journal should include a list of interesting words and names that you hear or come across in your reading. You will want to know the names of places and things for your writing. You will also want to just use the right word to get your exact meaning across to the reader. So just jot them down in your journal for later use. The author Henry James kept a journal in which he often put lists of names of people, cities, buildings, etc. that he might want to use later. Okay. Once again, you're jotting these things down. You're, you're jotting portraits. That might end up being the characters in your story. You're jotting down names of places or people that might end up being used in your story. The next thing is the dialogue. Dialogue. A good writer listens closely to how people talk. When he writes about people, he wants the characters to sound right. The southern lady must sound like a southern lady would sound. The waiter must say things that a waiter would say. What funny things might a young child say? What would an athlete say during an interview? You will develop a good ear and a good memory if you practice making journal entries of what people say and how they say it, okay? And then observations and reactions. You may see something on your way to school and wonder about it, record it in your journal. You may hear something on the news or in a conversation have a particular reaction to it, record that too. Be alert to the odd, the different, and the meaningful. Anything that causes you to think and tell about it in your journal. How many of you would think that news reporters are good at this journaling process? Yes, they have to be. This is their job, okay? They hear an interesting fact, they write it down. They, they observe, okay? If they were to write a report on something not true, they could get in a lot of trouble. So they have to study it, they have to observe, they have to get the facts, okay? Look at page 53. In that top um, peach box, it says, all around us are things waiting to be written about. Noticing these things will enrich your life. Recording them will sharpen your writing. Have you watched a memorable football game lately? Football just started up, so that's exciting. Um, have you walked in the rain? How many of you ever walked in the rain? I know it's a little things, but do you guys know I have one of my favorite memories when I was in high school? We took a cheerleading and basketball trip, and we went up to Northern California and we were gone for like four days. But one of my most favorite memories is along the way, we stopped to get gas and it was pouring down rain and uh, the cheerleaders, all of us got out and we just ran and jumped in the puddles of the rain. And we had so much fun just running in the rain. And that is a vivid memory that I have. And it was something simple, just like running in the rain, but I have that. And so when you have those memories, write those down so you can remember them. 
Um, have you had an over have you had or overheard an interesting conversation? Have you been introduced to an unusual character in a book? Has God taught you a lesson, um, a special lesson lately? Write about it. Choose a topic that you are interested in and write about it in your journal, okay? So all of this gave us information about some things that we should and can write about in our journals. Here's a little mind stretcher thing. This would be a hat expert, and this is something you guys can do on your own if you'd like. It says, you know what all of these types of headgear are. Would you wear them? And it goes through all of these different types of hats. And honestly, I know very few of them. I know what a Stetson hat is, a sombrero. I know what a tiara is. I know what a turban is. Um, let's see, fedora, I know what that one is. Um, a bonnet, I know what that one is. A beret, I know what that one is. But there's a lot of them, obviously a beanie. There's a lot of them that I don't know. So when you are a good writer, you're going to do some investigation. You're going to want to learn. You're going to gather as much information as you can. And how fun when you have information that not everybody has. You've learned something new and you can share it. You can write about it. And someone can learn something because of your investigation, something that you learned. This is in your journal. As a journal entry, Write a portrait of a person, not an individual, but someone who represents a general class of people. You may want to write about the talker, the borrower, or the life of the party. Think of the characteristics of that type of person and then write about him in poetry or story form. Are you guys ready for your creative writing challenge today? Get out a sheet of paper. Your poem, we are going to write it in poetry form, is called The Talker. So this is what I want on your paper. Remember that on your paper. Here's your top line. Here's your three holes. Your name goes here. Date. On that third line here, you can write the title, The Talker, right in the middle, okay? Now, we're going to write this in poetry form. Someone tell me something that you know about poetry. Poetry. How do we write poetry? Yes. Josiah. What? It's very descriptive. Okay, Emmeline? It rhymes, okay? So we're going to try to get every other line to have that last word rhyming. Now, not all poetry rhymes. There is some poetry that it doesn't always have to rhyme. But we're going to challenge ourselves today, ourselves today and we're going to work on this together. The talker. Okay, so let's see who can give us our first line of this creative writing. And do you want to make sure you're participating at home as well? The first line about the talker. When you think about the talker, Someone who's always talking. What's the first line that we could put in this poem? Tony, what do you think? Uh, I think this is question. Yes. Do we have to write it in cursive? Um, if you know cursive, I want you to write it in cursive. If you're still learning, you can write it in print. Yes. Uh, well, the first line, we're, remember we're going to rhyme every other line. Okay, so the first line doesn't have to have words that rhyme. How about if I get it started for you guys, okay? We have a special person in class. Mine's gonna be bigger than my little notebook paper, okay? We have a very, or a special, we have a special person in class Let me 
this so I can write it bigger. Who can't control his tongue. And I'm not talking about Adam, I promise. Just kidding, Adam. No, you guys are doing very good. Everyone's being very quiet today. We have a special person in class who can't control his tongue. Yes. Uh, are we going to skip lines? Um, on this poem, yeah. E well, you don't have to skip lines on this one. Just make sure when we're writing poetry, every other line in indents, okay? So the way I'm writing it on the board, just write it on your paper. You don't have to skip lines on this one because we're doing it together. Yes. Yes. So then you'll, then you'll skip a line after the title and you'll start here. We have a special person in class who can't control his tongue. When I correct him, he gives me sass. Okay, that's as far as I'm taking you. Now, who can give me the next sign? Oh. So we have class and sass. So we want to try to have our next line end with something that rhymes with tongue. Tongue. We have a special person in class who can't control his tongue. When I correct him, he gives me sass. Emmeline? And tongue Well, you want the last word to rhyme with tongue. So you want the last word to say that ong sound. Yes, ma'am. That's fine. As long as it's in the middle, I'm okay with that. Make sure you indent every other line so you'll notice this one was indented a little bit. Can anyone give me the next line? Adam? Does K rhyme with tongue? No, sir. Y'all are just as talkative as he is. Yep. We have a special person in class who can't control his tongue. When I correct him, he gives me sass. Come on, guys. I've given you the first oh. three lines. Oh. Gavin? Let's think of some words that rhyme with tongue. Ariel, you got one? Good. When I correct him, he gives me sass. But gets away. I'm going to shorten it because it's one line, okay? But gets away because the bell rung. He talks and talks throughout our lunch. Stop saying names. Okay, who can give me the next sign? We're starting a new rhyme, okay? So now we have four lines where this and this rhymed and this and this rhymed. Now we're gonna start a whole nother four lines. 
that have every other rhyming word, okay? He talks and talks throughout, I spelled that wrong, our lunch. He sits and sits to recess. He sits and sits. Recess might be a hard word to rhyme with, so how about he sits and sits while at play? Okay, because when we're thinking about poetry, we're trying to think of words that are easier to rhyme. So, okay, so now we're looking for a line that rhymes, ends with a word that rhymes with lunch. We have bunch, munch, crunch. Punch. He talks and talks throughout our lunch. He sits and sits while at play. Who can give me the next line? Shane? He has a bunch of lunch. <laughs> well, we already have lunch. So you don't want to end it with lunch again. Try to end it with a word that rhymes with lunch, like ending it with bunch or munch. Hold on. Wait, wait. Okay. Tristan? He has a bunch to munch. To munch? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now our next line, we want to rhyme with this word play. Who can give me the next line of our poem, The Talker? Adam? And he likes cuties. <laughs> Does that rhyme with play? No. Okay. That's not what we're looking for then. Yes. He doesn't like to sit and stay. He is a talker, there is no doubt. We're going to finish our poem here, so we're going to end this last line to where it rhymes with doubt. He is a talker, there is no doubt. I'm thinking of the word pout. Gavin? Every second he wants to shout. I like it. And there's your poem. Now Mrs. Will helped you a lot with that one. We went through, I helped you think it through, but this is exactly how we would take a portrait. Now this is a portrait of a person, not a specific person. I didn't say let's write a poem about Shane. 
We talked about a talker. There are many of these in the world, right? I had a friend who actually got held back in kindergarten simply because she talked too much. <laughs> they said she wasn't ready for first grade because she did too much talking. So um, there are a lot of talkers. There's a lot of people who aren't talkers, a lot of people who are shy, and that's okay. Um, being a talker is a good thing as you get older because you want to be able to come out of yourself. You want to be able to communicate with others. So this is a portrait of a particular type of person, someone who is a talker. And particularly we're talking about someone who talks in class and it's a funny little poem. But this is a perfect example of a portrait that we wrote in poetic form, okay? We have a special person in class who can't control his tongue. When I correct him, he gives me sass, but gets away because the bell rung. He talks and talks throughout our lunch. He sits and sits while at play. He has a whole bunch to munch. He doesn't like to sit and stay. He is a talker, there is no doubt. Every second, he wants to shout. Give you guys a little bit of a round of applause. We all worked together and we came up with a nice poem. Make sure you have this written down on your paper because you are going to turn them in to me. So make sure you've written all of these lines down. Yes. It does. Well, Dr. Seuss is a master at poetry. So what it sounds like is it sounds like poetry, right? But Dr. Seuss happened to be one of the most popular poets because he was so masterful at it. And he did a great job at getting kids' attention, specifically with his poetry. I um, actually really love poetry. I love reading it. Um, there's lots of different forms of poetry. But I hope that you learn and embrace some of these different writing styles. Because if anything, it's going to help you in the future with your writing and assignments in school, in college. It's also going to help you expand your knowledge of vocabulary. It's going to help you expand your creativity. So many times I see that we're kind of dead in our brain because we're used to sitting in front of a Nintendo screen all hours of the day. We're used to sitting in front of a TV, and there's nothing wrong with playing these things for a little bit or watching a show every now and then, but I hope that we're not doing it on a continual, long, lengthy basis because what those things do, sixth grade, is they kind of, they inter what they are is their entertainment. Have you guys heard of that term before, entertainment? Something that entertains you. When something is entertaining you, it's making you not have to think for yourself. So you're not exercising your brain. Now, many of you probably learned this already, but you guys know your brain is a big muscle, right? And if you want to be strong physically, what do you have to do with your muscles? You have to exercise them, right? I don't know if any of you have seen the junior high or high school out there already. I'm going to go ahead and scoot over this way. I'll move this a little bit closer here for you, Gianni, in case you didn't see it. Um, most of our junior high